first of all, I want to join others in welcoming all of you from Electricité de France uh, to Colombia. Uh, we have a long partnership with EDF in the university and at my school, uh, School of International and Public Affairs. Uh, it's been a very fruitful partnership for us, and we're delighted that you're here, that you all made it in the same, at the right time, in the right place. Um, so I want to thank also um, uh, those who have been responsible for organizing this event. Uh, I know Alicia and Laurent have already thanked you for coming, uh, but I want to thank them for uh, all of the arrangements that they made. Um, is uh, Marta Vicarelli here? Ah, Marta, as you know, is, um, has a PhD in Colombia and economics and worked with Jeff Heal in, uh, in, uh, in CIPA and at the business school. Um, she's an a expert on climate change, so she's part of your group, and I'm well, uh, delighted to welcome you back to Colombia again. Um, the Alliance program, uh, it says here very clearly, enjoys a very special status at Colombia, and I can tell you why. Um, the Alliance program uh, is part of, uh, is only uh, one of two institution level uh, agreements that we have with other uh, universities around the world. Um, so what that means is that the, um, what EDF has been supporting, that is the Alliance program, is a program that involves every part of Colombia, all of our nine professional schools, uh, and the arts and sciences, which include the doctoral programs, and our undergraduate college as well. Um, this means that uh, it's the most important program, I think, of uh, academic and cultural exchange that we have uh, with any other part of the world. And it brings Columbia together with three French institutions who are uh, wonderful partners. Uh, Alicia and her predecessors have made sure that the program has gotten off the ground uh, well. Um, and it involves both student exchanges dual degree program and dual degree programs as well as exchanges of faculty professors so it's um and the professors and students come from all parts of the university so for us it's been a wonderful way to reintroduce our students to france and to french institutions and to welcome uh, to colombia uh, a series of faculty professors and experts uh, and students as well from three of france's great uh, institutions we don't have enough french and French students and French faculty at Columbia. So this has helped us to make up for a deficiency that we all recognized, but we couldn't uh, possibly do anything to repair uh, until EDF and Alliance came along. Um, I should say um, that um, one of the duties I inherited on becoming the interim provost of the universe, do you know what a provost is? I don't think people are familiar. Right. Um, a provost, it was explained to me when I moved into the office, uh, is <laughs> the university's chief academic officer. So I'm responsible for programs that have to do with the intellectual quality of the institution. I have to approve every tenured appointment uh, to our faculty. Um, I'm responsible for programs that involve more than one of our professional schools or, or departments. Um, and uh, I'm responsible for any institution to institution agreements between Columbia and other institutions around the world. So uh, the Alliance program actually reports to me. Um, so I'm, somehow I became your boss <laughs> in the lecture. Uh, so this is one of, as you can imagine, at a great complex institution like this one, this is one of the duties that I most enjoy. Um, there are two kinds of people that come into my office. Those that have problems they want me to solve, and those who have solutions that they want me to bless. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I've never gotten anything but solutions from the uh, from the Alliance staff, and so I'm very grateful for that. Um, SIPA, the school that I was happily running before I was taken away to be the interim provost, the School of International and Public Affairs, has had a long relationship with the uh, Alliance program. We have um, a faculty exchange program with uh, Sciences Po, in which uh, a Sciences Po professor comes to Columbia each year, and one of our faculty goes to Sciences Po. And we've had a series of wonderful people from Sciences Po most recently, uh, Ghassan Salame, who taught one of the most popular courses uh, at SIPA in the politics, the complicated politics of the Middle East. Uh, and several of our faculty have gone there. Most recently, the Vice Dean of SIPA, Robert Lieberman, uh, who, has, uh, uh, who is a specialist on American social welfare uh, policies and uh, race. We also have um, dual degree programs uh, with Sciences Po. 
uh, in which uh, our students uh, take a first year here and then their second year uh, at Sciences Po and the same is true for the Sciences Po students. Um, so we have uh, Sciences Po students that are getting a master's degree from Sciences Po and from SIPA and from Columbia af uh, after two years in which they take courses in both institutions. And it's been a m wonderfully popular program um, in which uh, a number of our students have found um, that their careers have taken off uh, much more rapidly than they might have expected had they received a degree only from SIPA. Uh, so their ability to present themselves as really international people uh, who have experienced a year at a French institution and done well uh, has helped them enormously. Uh, and the intellectual climate in the two schools is sufficiently different so that uh, the two schools, each one adds something to their education that they would not otherwise uh, have been able to acquire. SIPA has also benefited from uh, EDF in another way. We have a Center for Energy, Marine Transportation, and Public Policy, which is one of our chief um, uh, research centers at SIPA. Uh, and this is a center in which uh, our faculty do research on issues of global energy uh, security uh, and political economy. And EDF has been a wonderful supporter of that center over the last several years as well. So I want to say something very uh, warm about EDF's support for this major initiative at SIPA. Um, the, the engine that makes all this work is, of course, the, the Alliance, uh, the Alliance Endowment. That is, although conditions may change, and uh, what we want to accomplish at any moment in time may be different in the future than it is now, um, the fact that we have an endowment that in perpetuity supports relationships between French uh, institutions and Colombia means that we will forever. I'm sure everybody sorry, is familiar with the concept of endowment. Ah, I mean, yes, that's a... French uh, or European institutions are not that rich. That's so <coughs> right. uh, endowments or uh, funds that are created uh, from which the institutions that have them may spend only a portion of the annual income, uh, but not the principal. So the Alliance Endowment is invested with the rest of Colombia's almost $7, million, $7 billion endowment in the stock market. I'm pleased to report to you that uh, the return on our investment last year was in excess of 23% uh, in very difficult times. So the Alliance has benefited from the expertise that uh, Colombia employs to manage its funds. <laughs> it is scary. Uh, don't add, that's uh, as of June 30. <laughs> I, I don't know anything about what's happened over the summer. So, <laughs> uh, so for the year ending June 30, we, we managed uh, more than 23% return. Um, but what that means is that every year, uh, the university pays out to units everywhere um, uh, an amount based on the returns over three years of this fund. And the Alliance will receive forever uh, a return on the endowment on the funds that are invested as part of the Columbia Endowment to support its activities uh, from now on until the end of time. So, this, so the good thing about having an endowment is that you don't have to go back each year and beg for money. Uh, we don't ask any legislature um, to be generous um, and we don't have to go to individual donors again, at least for that portion that's already here and invested forever. So having this endowment has been tremendously important for the Alliance. Uh, we're hoping that it'll grow and grow tremendously over time so that uh, we can support additional activities that the Alliance would propose to us. Um, if you have any questions about uh, Columbia University that an interim provost could possibly answer, I'd be delighted to respond, but I wanna make sure that you all feel uh, as welcome here as possible. Um, I know that you've been running into a number of our faculty uh, who have been presenting you with some of the results of their research. We could have doubled or tripled the number of faculty who we recruited uh, for this purpose, so you have to come back. Uh, so that in the future you can meet some of the ones that didn't quite make it onto your very busy schedule for these last few days. So thank you very much for coming, and thank you for your support of the Alliance. Mm -hmm. the policy makers, mm -hmm. the mayor, mm -hmm. um, many 
facets of, of, <coughs> of life in America mm -hmm. uh, in, in a way that we're not always familiar with in Europe since mm -hmm. our academic institutions mm -hmm. are somewhat smaller mm -hmm. and also less connected. So can you yeah. maybe explain what's your vision of how it's working here? Well, the largest number of connections between Colombia and the surrounding community and, uh, uh, and the larger uh, policy-making community of the city and then of the state and nation are connections that are made every day by individual faculty whose research is relevant to some question of public import. Uh, and all of that activity is completely uncontrolled. Um, I wake up every morning worrying about what the newspapers will say that, wha that a member of my faculty has, uh, has done in the last 24 hours, uh, said to the press or re reported in a, uh, in a research paper. Um, so much of what we do, uh, perhaps most of what we do to connect to the surrounding community uh, is done by individual faculty members who pay absolutely no attention to what deans and provosts tell them they should be doing. Uh, and I suppose that's exactly the way we want it. Uh, but the university has institutional ties with the city, with the state, with the country, and internationally that are reflected in some of the programs that it that has developed over time. Perhaps the most difficult for American universities to, is to establish positive relations with their immediate environment. Um, we refer to these problems as town-gown relationships. So the gown, that is the university, we dress up in funny gowns on uh, graduation day. Uh, the, on the side of the gown, universities tend to want to expand and by gobbling up neighborhoods uh, at the lowest possible price and then ignoring their denizens forever. Um, on the other hand, towns tend to see universities as not only as sources of employment, uh, but also as places where on Saturday evenings, young people between the ages of 18 and 25 misbehave. Uh, 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 and where um, the institution uh, adopts a kind of imperialist attitude towards its, surrounding, towards its surroundings that are uh, at times create all kinds of problems. Uh, Colombia's had a long, uh, sometimes troubled and sometimes very positive relationship with the surrounding communities in the northern part of Manhattan. Uh, we have, we occupy an enormous part of what is called Morningside Heights, this part of Manhattan, and then if you go further north 40 blocks, uh, there's the Columbia Medical Center and the School of Public Health, and they're also huge, um, a huge presence uh, in this part of the city. Um, the most uh, recent and significant relationship uh, relationships that we've built with the community have to do with the university's expansion to the north. We're, um, uh, we've purchased about 18 acres, so that's about seven and a half hectare hectares of land north of our current campus in a part of the city that's known as Manhattanville. Um, and if you go north of the university up to about 125th Street, you'll see a giant hole in the ground with lots of construction equipment. The first phase in the construction of this new campus uh, that will be devoted mostly to graduate and research activities. Uh, in the first phase, I'm delighted to say, the School of International and Public Affairs will have a building, the business school, uh, the School of the Arts will have a theater, there'll be a small conference center, and the giant building you see going up now is a research institute in neurosciences. And much of the rest of that 18-acre uh, campus will be devoted to science. Um, so in the process of acquiring that property and communicating our intentions to the surrounding community, we entered into discussions with what are called in Manhattan local community boards. Local community boards are, are citizens who are elected by their neighbors um, to keep watch on their communities, to lobby the city for more services, um, to notice when things are going wrong uh, and to badger um, city agencies to do better. So what the university did was to work with the local community board north of the city and enter into what is called a community benefits agreement so that over the next 20 years, the university will be supporting many of the activities, um, social activities and cultural activities in the surrounding neighborhood. Um, I think the total cost to the university in kind and in money of the community benefits agreement that we entered into is in the range of 60 to 100 million dollars. So the first phase of this community benefits agreement uh, will take shape when uh, 
Columbia Teachers College opens a demonstration school. The hope is that it will be able to operate a public school in a way that demonstrates to other public schools in the city how one can improve the quality of primary and secondary education. But the uh, community benefits agreement also contains provisions that require us to hire contractors who are minority, who are from uh, underrepresented minorities and women uh, for at least 25% of the total work that is done in the construction of this new campus. And it requires um, us to consider uh, applications from people who live in the neighborhood um, and who would like to work on those projects. There are lots of other benefits that the community uh, and, uh, and the university agreed upon as part of this expansion project. So that's one way in which the university um, interacts with its uh, immediate surroundings. With respect to the, the city, state, and national governments, um, most, of the, most of our interactions have to do with uh, the activities of individual faculty. But for example, we are just now preparing a, a major proposal to the city government, which issued a request for proposals uh, last February. Um, the city government wants to support the creation of new science and engineering complex in the city that would connect with businesses and the, and the city government in a way that would create jobs and create a certain dynamism in technologically progressive areas of, um, uh, of engineering and applied scientific research. So we're, we're planning to do devote a part of the next phase of construction in Manhattanville, assuming that we win the contest, uh, to the creation of a new uh, data sciences institute that would focus on uh, areas like um, uh, health statistics, on media, on cybersecurity, on areas in which masses of data have now become available through the internet and elsewhere, uh, but that in which our capacity to use the data is still quite limited. One of the areas is um, smart cities, that is the use of masses of data to analyze and propose solutions to city problems from traffic to environment. So another way in which we interact is collectively to involve portions of our faculty, in this case the engineering and applied sciences faculty, and the business school to find ways that we can work together to help dynamize the city economy. At the, at the state and national level, the universe, units of the university enter into contractual relationships that involve all kinds of research from um, small groups of faculty that advise uh, the environmental protection, the protection agency on issues that have to do with the environment to um, <coughs> folks in the business school that have contracts with, um, uh, consulting contracts with, uh, and group contracts with um, private enterprise. So um, although the model for an American university is to create a sort of campus distinct from, apart from, and quite different in aspect to the surrounding community, Actually, universities, no matter how enclosed they look in the United States, are really quite porous um, and interact with society at all kinds of levels. So it's a long answer to a very short and <laughs> pointed question. Anything else I can tell you about the university? You know we have about 25,000 students. About 6,500 are undergraduates, and the rest are graduate and professional school students. Um, they're all very well behaved, except on Saturday nights. <laughs> uh, we have one of the largest uh, medical research centers in the country. Um, we certainly have the largest and best public policy school uh, anywhere in the world. Uh, and how many of you are from EDF? Everyone. Everyone. Ah, fantastic. But in different countries. But from different countries. Ah, uh, sure. Well, I hope very much that you enjoy your stay at Columbia and in New York. Please come back as often as you like. We have <laughs> lots more to tell you uh, about the university and lots more faculty who haven't had a chance to meet you yet. So thanks very much. It's a pleasure to have you.